I'm going to talk to you about uh, sinusitis of dental etiology. Uh, and this is very common and very much underappreciated. So over 60% of posterior dental infections can or will cause sinusitis. And the resultant maxillary sinusitis has been quoted in the literature from 10 to 47%. But most importantly, if you look at guidelines for sinus disease and diagnosis of sinus disease, only 13% of the 85 published guidelines even mention this. How many um, talks like this have you seen at rhinology meetings or ENT meetings? More recent literature has actually suggested that this is even higher than 10 to 40%. Uh, CT studies, studies have shown that up to 86% of sinusitis are caused by a dental pathology. Uh, Maylett, in particular, who's a, uh, from the dental literature, showed that over 50% of sinusitises were associated with a dental abscess, most of the time from a molar abscess. Um, and that's partly because of uh, good CT technology. The, lit the world literature um, shows lots of reasons for this, including implantitis which is very common in, um, the, uh, uh, in Asia. And what I'm really going to talk about is endodontal disease. And endodontal disease is a progression of basically a tooth abscess or a rotten tooth into the sinus that starts with a periapical halo lesion. Uh, this is seen on plain film, and we'll see them on CT also. Uh, periapical mucositis, which most of us would look at this and call it a uh, mucus retention cyst. Speaking of which, mucus retention cysts are seen in 8 to 10 percent of asymmetric, asymptomatic CT scans. Uh, they're considered incidental findings by most of us. Uh, they're usually asymptomatic. However, they may cause pain or pressure from our perspective if they block the ostium. If they're not blocking the ostium and their symptoms, we can talk about whether they need to be removed, but the first thing I would do is I would send them to an endodontist because frequently these things are caused by endodontal disease. So true maxillary sinusitis of dental etiology is where the dental infection perforates through the floor of the sinus. Uh, it typically creates minimal dental symptoms and lots of sinus symptoms, pain, pressure, drainage, and the drainage tends to be very... Uh, uh, um, foul in nature. Um, and the definition of MSDO is the tooth must be necrotic, have a failed root canal therapy, or a vertical root fracture, or advanced periodontal disease. And that's what we're defining. And just to differentiate the two, the, 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 the picture on the right is your average 50-year-old country club member that has normal teeth or good teeth or teeth that have crowns on them. This is your average Harborview patient from the county hospital that comes up with horrible dentition. So this is periodontal disease, where you've got lack of bone or loss of bone up the entire tooth. This is where bone is well seated against the tooth, but you've got an abscess over the top of the tooth. And that's the easy ones. Those are the chip shots. So we started looking at this uh, several years ago. We published our first 33 cases. Uh, the presentation, 88% sinus pain, post-nasal drip, congestion, toothache, foul drainage. That was a retrospective review. We now have over 100 cases, and I can guarantee you that about 85% of them have foul drainage if you ask. So foul drainage is also pathognomonic for this. So we're going to go through four of these cases that were kind of interesting. Uh, first one is just a chip shot. Again, this is your 50-year-old country club member who happens to be the wife of one of the radiologists. Um, had lots of pain, pressure, foul drainage, clearly has a periapical abscess. Um, the primary care doctor, the radiologist, nobody recognized that, came to me, said, you need your tooth fixed, tooth gut fixed, sinusitis resolved. On CT, this is your classical halo lesion. Um, and I always look at the axial cuts across the teeth to look for that. Uh, this uh, is a little harder, fairway shot. Uh, one of my partners operated on this patient, young guy, uh, basically came with a large symptomatic mucus retention cyst and an open infundibula. So he did a little uh, kind of mini fess, opened the cyst, a year later symptoms were back, 
We managed them medically, got another CT, and on the second time around, we clearly saw the periapical abscess. So it was missed the first time because you couldn't actually see the abscess on the first film. And one of the clues is an open infundibula. When you see somebody with symptomatic maxillary sinus disease and an open infundibula, think tooth. Little harder case. This patient has periapical abscess way out there on one of the anterior teeth. It's way away from the sinus disease. We never thought they were related until the root canal was performed, and there's clearly a fistula going from the tooth root into the sinus. And sure enough, once the root canal is performed, the sinusitis resolved. And this was my hardest case. Uh, Fifth-year-old male who I've gotten to know quite well over the years. He's a policeman in Spokane. Uh, we did a standard sort of limited fest for sp sporadic sinus disease. He did really well for three years. Then he developed severe asthma, post-nasal drip, and this sinusitis that we couldn't clear up no matter what until we found that peptostreptococcus was growing. And in my mind, that is pathognomonic for a dental abscess. We saw no evidence of a dental problem on CT, uh, but I sent him to my endodontist anyway, and sure enough, when the root canal is performed, the sinusitis, the asthma, all of his problems resolved. And so that's just a, a, a piece of the type of people that you'll see if you look for this problem. Open your eyes and you will see. Seek and you, sh you shall find. So what you're looking for on CT is the obvious ones, the periapical halo, uh, bone loss over the top of the tooth root, old root canals that have gone bad. Um, over about 15 to 20 years, about 15 to 20% of root canals go bad, and infection will come up along the root canal, and associated sinusitis. Um, our findings, to summarize our findings, even though I've talked to our radiologists about this problem, radiologists do not see it. And they will not report it in their reports, even if it's obvious. So. In our 33 cases, we had eight of the 33 were identified by radiologists. Now, to be fair, this group up here had obvious dental disease on, on CT. This group didn't. They had clues. They had indirect evidence. They had an old root canal. They had lack of bone over the top of the tooth, because if there's no bone on the top of the tooth, there's no bone to lift off to see the bad tooth. Um, we also looked at this in terms of the uh, infundibula. I mentioned that a patent infundibula is a clue. If they've had an antrostomy and had maxillary sinus disease confined to the sinus, 86% of the time um, they had a patent infundibula with maxillary sinusitis of, of dental etiology. So for me, those are clues. So what are the radiologic, radiologic hallmarks of maxillary sinus of DDL? Uh, maxillary sinusitis of dental etiology, as opposed to endodontic disease, it is unilateral disease, and multiple studies have shown this. Isolated maxillary sinusitis is highly associated with endodontic disease. Maxillary floor disease, if the disease is on top of a tooth, it probably came from a tooth. Um, infundibular obstruction, and again, we talked about mucus retention cysts. So, how do you treat this? You got to treat the root of the problem. Uh, we treat it with antibiotic steroids and sometimes surgical drainage. Uh, the world literature suggests that these people get surgery all the time or should get surgery all the time. And we think that may not be necessary if we treat the tooth. Um, it's almost always a problem in the third molar or the second molar. Molar anatomy is incredibly complex with all of these little micro channels inside the, the molar. And what I'm heading towards is that this is not a problem that most general dentists are equipped to deal with. Most general dentists do not understand this problem, and most people who have this problem tell me, I just went to my dentist and they say my teeth are fine. So again, these are people that have good teeth, have lots of restorations, they belong to the country club. They don't hang out at Harborview. So they have the money to pay for an endodontist, because endodontists don't, don't generally take health insurance or dental insurance. But endodontists use operating microscopes. General dentists do not. 
And so through the operating microscope, they're going to do a much better job of getting into the roots. Um, and then this is just your typical um, pre-root canal with uh, periapical mucositis. And then six months later, after the root canal has been formed, that mucositis all resolves. That's it. I think I did it when time's up. <laughs> <laughs>